Roloff introduced their E14 speed hub, electronically shifted 14 gear products in late 2017 for 2018 model year. I'm in the United States. I'm hanging out with Chris Nolte from Propel Bikes. Hey guys. And we're looking at some recent Mueller products. And this is one of the first uh, manufacturers I've seen to bring the speed hub with electronic shifting. And they are exclusively Bosch for their drive system, which is great because they integrate and their shift detection built in. Yeah, that's the only motor system that uh, the speed hub E14 works with currently. It's pretty, pretty neat, you guys. I've been riding around, reviewing some of these bikes uh, separately, but I wanted to go over the speed hub uh, and just focus on that real quick. So it weighs between 1,700 and 1,800 grams, is that right? So that's about 3.75 pounds. Might make it a little bit heavier than a traditional derailleur and cassette cluster, but maybe on par with something like the Enviolo, the New Vinci N380 that you might've seen in the past. Um, they used to have a version of that called the N360. Now they have N380. And if you think about what that might mean, like that's degrees of shifting range. So a lot of times, uh, you know, 14 to 28 tooth, that's kind of a small, cheaper cassette. Or then you get up to like the SRAM Eagle where it's 10 tooth to 50 tooth, that's 500 degrees. That's one of the widest cassette clusters I've seen. Yeah. That's kind of mainstream available. Uh, what that means is that you can maintain a comfortable pedal cadence at low speed for climbing or high speed for hitting and maintaining higher top speeds. And that's really relevant here because Reese Mueller does have their HS high speed electric bikes. Okay, so for the Roloff E14 Speed Hub, I think the range is 526 degrees. That's right. So yeah. it's even greater than the SRAM Eagle, right? which is phenomenal. To have an internally geared hub like this, something that's very durable, you can look at this right here. There's no derailleur hanging down. We don't have the cassette happening and there's room for uh, maybe a belt drive which is clean and quiet very durable probably more reliable than uh, a chain and this one happens to have the cdx so it's kind of a center track design that's not going to fall off um, and it just brings everything in closer it's a really nice implementation recent miller's done a great job uh, with their frame designs because in this case the belt just runs below the chain stay it's kind of a combined seat stay chain stay uh, versus other frames where they have to make a physical cut so you can get a belt on. So I think that's a really good combination here, but I believe they also have like a chain driven bike with the roll off. Right, so the Delight Mountain, they still continue with the uh, chain drive on that set setup. That might be easier to do quick trail maintenance. It's also sometimes if you're like really dirty conditions, the belt mm. is not always so ideal. And I think that that's one of the things with the mountain specifically where yeah. you, you know you might have that. You can fix it pretty easily if you bring an extra link or two. And this was, we, we were just at Interbike in Reno. This is the first year they had it out there, 2018. And we saw the, uh, the e-box from Nikolai. Right. Full suspension electric mountain bike. That one also had Bosch and it also has uh, the Roloff E14 and it's got the belt with like some tensioners and everything very fancy setup that's right yeah yeah it's a cool company Nikolai yeah. very cool yeah so coming back to uh, the Roloff speed hub if it doesn't have a derailleur you know how, how is the shifting happening there there's a little motor in here like servos that uh, pull some cables and step through the different gears inside so that's like your derailleur it's pretty well tucked in and it's almost protected by the 180 millimeter disc brake rotor in this case and the kickstand mounting position. So that's it. It's a kind of a close up on that. And then here is the shifting mechanism. So you've got these two rubberized buttons up and down, and then there's an M button below. In this case, a lot of the uh, setup is handled through the Bosch display panel. So if I turn this on, this is the Intuvia. And then I press plus over here. You can see that it actually tells me I'm in gear five now. Now I'm in gear six. And if we go down here, you can hear it, which is very cool. So you can shift it standstill. It doesn't hurt the drivetrain, uh, which, which is the case if you have a derailleur. You can only shift so far and then it's kind of bending and you can mash those gears to have shift detection, uh, electronic shift detection in this case, versus sort of a physical sensor shift detection as they have on the other Bosch chain derailleur setups. That's pretty cool. And it's it's really, I would say, a durable setup. I and mean, what are the pros and cons of this in your mind, Chris? Why uh, is it worth paying more and how much more does it add? 
Sure. Yeah, I think uh, if you're compare it to a derailleur setup, you're going generally speaking about a thousand dollars more for okay. the roll-off system. Um, sometimes a little bit more depending on the other overall spec of the bike, because oftentimes those things are upgraded as well. Hmm. But you know, really the benefit, I'd say one of the main benefits is the range of mm -hmm. gears. That's a huge thing. Uh, you know, so comparatively you know where, where that really comes into play is if you're going on extremely varied terrain you yeah. know maybe you're climbing extreme hills and then you also want to go down those hills and keep up your cadence or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. um, some other details low maintenance mm -hmm. so every so often you have to change the oil have you ever done that uh yeah sure how sure. does that work it's Do a we... pretty simple process i mean actually inside the hub you can see here there's this little Oh. Um, kind of uh, bleed nut here and so basically you just open that up you use a syringe and you can suck the oil out huh. and then put new oil in it's a pretty simple process you know comparative to a derailleur where you have a lot more adjustment and that sort of thing it's really relatively low maintenance and the maintenance intervals are much longer generally speaking as well I've done nothing against the new Vinci system or the NVO low as it's now called uh, but you, if you're pedaling and there's energy and force being applied to that belt or chain and you're trying to shift, it's hard. You kind of can't and it doesn't have like a shift detection situation going on. Uh, alternatively, if you have like an Alphine, like a Shimano Nexus internally geared hub or something, which is again an internally geared hub like this, right. it might not have the range, the number of steps, so the increments are sort of bigger and the range is just smaller. When I shift on those sometimes, it's it's relying on a different type of shift detection so it's it's sort of the physical signal it's not quite as precise and there are times where it'll kind of like it kind of clicks it won't yeah. shift naturally it, it's requiring me to ease off on my pedals whereas this one does it for me like i can literally press those buttons and pedal as hard as i want and it, it will still cut out and protect itself yeah traditionally with the internal hubs you really do have to let off your pedaling let that engage and then continue pedaling on uh this you still should let off a little bit but as you notice, like after you get used to it, it shifts pretty quick. I mean, it's 180 milliseconds. So wow. that's a very brief period. And from what I found riding the bike for a little while is you can actually find that point in your natural cadence where you're not really putting like right much around pressure. the top where you're kind of right like... around the top. You're actually not putting that much, much power into the pedals. And it's a really ideal time to shift. Yeah. And if you can time it correctly, you can really get it to, to, to shift well. Um, but yeah, just getting back to kind of the pros of this particular system over say, you know, uh, an Enviolo or a traditional derailleur or whatever. I think they all have different use scenarios and fit people differently. But, you know, also now with these bikes, in, enabling them to couple them with the belt is, hmm. is quite a nice uh, feature. So then you have even lower maintenance um, you know, you don't have to worry about greasing it or anything like that. You just, you know, just keep it clean and you're going to have a really long life. I mean, I've actually heard with the roll-off hub, they, they list on their website that they've had somebody reported over 300,000 kilometers, which wow. is pretty close to uh, 200,000 miles, you know, which is pretty wild to think about um, that that a hub system can can last that long but you know really th those are some of the differences so I think you know for a lot of people you know if they're considering choosing this they're they're choosing this because they want the best out there mm -hmm. or maybe they're riding like really long distances and they and over time it, the cost actually adds up when you compare maintenance and that yeah. sort of stuff and it can actually be more cost effective to go with a system like this you know, where if your maintenance costs are lower. You, know. you work at a shop, right? And so you see some of this yourself, but I've had firsthand experience with this as well. Um, I bought a full suspension high bike years ago when they first brought Bosch to the United States. So I got like a performance line. It wasn't even the CX, it hadn't in, been introduced yet. And I gave it to my uncle after like six months cause I had had my fun and like learned all about the thing and I'm off to the next review or whatever. And uh, it was a neat way to gauge like reliability of the motor but what i found was over time he's he's replaced his derailleur several times now yeah and it's a nice derailleur that was like shimano dior xt you know and it had like 11 to 42 or something it was a it was a decent spread on that cassette it didn't have the the gear range that this does it certainly wasn't as tough as this and he's broken chains and the derailleur that's expensive so when you when you add in the shop support whether that's 
80 or 100 plus dollars worth of maintenance plus the part 50 plus dollars maybe sometimes right. more than that i don't know do you know how much a dior derailers and stuff are and you replace those yeah with... it, it varies but yeah it can be upwards of a hundred bucks easy, yeah so. so that's like two hundred dollars a shot right there yeah. um you know and then and you don't get the performance of this so that's pretty exciting to me it's neat to not very few e-bikes right now seem to even have this as an option i, I want to discuss uh, the the power uh, input for this is also the rating is really high it's 130 newton meters worth of force that motor the the performance line cx it's only capable of putting out 75 newton meters right. uh, on its own but when you pedal hard too you know and maybe they're going to use this with other drive systems in the future or maybe bosch changes it's it's neat to know that you have more than enough like strength in that to handle uh, really a lot of torque a lot of force and then it's set up to work with a number of different hub spacing configurations right here we have 135 millimeter hub spacing with a nine millimeter axle and uh, quick release skewer okay so you can go from 135 to what 142 so they do 142 we do 148 which is boost then uh for some fat bikes they go which is their xl version it's 170 or 177 and then they also have that double xl which is 190 and 197 wow. and then some of the hubs they'll make available with the through axle as an option so a m12 uh through axle sweet well it's neat to see this thing and we've talked a ton about it uh, i'm going to put the camera like here and on the other side and just try to get you some close-ups and from this view you can see the e14 up close and hopefully listen to some of the noises that it makes as i shift along and listen for that automatic downshifting when i stop i have it set to gear four but i'm going to take this all the way up to the highest gear during our ride test so here we go My understanding is that the Bosch control system is listening for rear wheel speed via this magnet right here and when it it recognizes that the bike has stopped it initiates the downshift and that's what the duh, 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 duh was it's pretty cool Anything that maybe you feel like we've missed or that you want to add to this I'm trying to make this a review this is yeah. a non sponsored thing okay so no right. one's paying we just thought like it would be fun to show you guys this it's exciting and you know yeah Chris carries Reese and Mueller and but this is fun you and I kind of geek out on this on our own yeah so. absolutely I mean it's, it's really exciting to see the technology and the evolution of how things are going um, you know some other details just about roll-off specifically you know as we shared before it's handmade in Germany but uh, this they're also in the process, I think, this coming year to be releasing an app which will allow some software updates, different stuff like that. So I think we're starting to see a lot more of those sort of things, They're integrating, you know, phones, the technology that we have in our pocket quite often, hmm. and, um, and to be able to do updates and, and make improvements on these systems. And um, it's, it's really quite nice to see that sort of development going on. Very cool. Well, shout out to Roloff yeah. and all the hand makers in Germany who uh, putting these things together and then getting them over here to the States. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I'm going to be covering a lot of the Reese and Mueller bikes and other stuff in the future. If you have any specific requests or like deep dive videos that you want to see like this, try to mix those in as well. Have fun out there, you guys. Thank you very much, Chris, and ride safe.